shake your tail thin A bikini babe, catching a road wave A big surprise, I'm gonna rise and flash my tooth cave All the buff dudes, safe on the beach food They're gonna need a bigger boat and bears real soon I'm a sea king, a CGI thing I'm here to eat and bear my teeth and shake a tail fin Welcome back to another episode of Bucket of Chum, the Shark Movie Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Captain Steve. This week, we're diving into Deep Fear from 2023, directed by Marcus Adams. So this movie just dropped on Netflix uh, just the other day, so I thought now would be the perfect time to review it. Uh, so this movie is starring a supermodel by the name of Madalena Gienia. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but uh, yeah, absolutely gorgeous smoke show i'm just gonna say that right off the bat so that's one reason to watch this movie if you liked watching the shallows for like blake lively and her bikini the entire movie you could watch this movie just for madalena whatever her name is because she's just she's absolutely gorgeous number one um and i thought she did a pretty good job in this movie overall but yeah uh let's just dive right into the plot synopsis first dive to survive a solo trip aboard a yacht takes a terrifying turn when a woman encounters three drug traffickers clinging to the shattered remains of a boat. They soon force her to dive into shark-infested waters to retrieve kilos of cocaine from the sunken wreck. So, this movie sounds like it's the real cocaine shark. So, if you listen to the podcast, you know I covered the movie called Cocaine Shark a while ago. And, yeah, it's called Cocaine Shark because it came out around the same time as Cocaine Bear. But there's like no, there's not actually any cocaine in the movie, from what I remember. Nor is there any sharks on cocaine. Um, so this movie makes me feel like it's going to deliver on some of those things that Cocaine Shark did not. But we'll uh, we'll have to see. Which brings me into the poster expectations. So most of the posters I've seen for this movie, um, it's just it's a shark getting into some cocaine. Like, it's, like, bursting through the water, and it's coming at the camera. So, I'm expecting some, like, fucked up sharks on cocaine doing some fucked up shit. Based on this poster. Because, why why else show this? I mean, I just, I want this shark to be, like, fast and crazy. And, like, you know, go to Vegas and blow all of its fucking money and on, like, hookers and whatnot. Like, that's the cocaine shark that I'm looking for. I mean... This movie also sounds like movies like The Deep and Shark from 1969. And there are some others with similar plots, like people get roped in to dive down for either sunken treasure or drugs, um, you know, to help criminals in some way. And I think Into the Blue has a similar plot as well. Um, and those may be ones I cover in the future, but we'll see. Um, it has an average rating of 1.9 stars on Letterboxd. Um, for a newer movie... I mean, I guess that it's a little surprising that it's not a little bit higher just because it seems like it's a bigger budget film. So I'm not sure why people aren't responding to this as well. Um, but you know what? Uh, let's see if it offers us anything different than uh, the other cocaine shark. And let's dive in. We start off with a radio call, uh, an SOS call, and we see a boat capsized and there's a big storm happening and there's a kid yelling for their dad. And while they uh, stop, they sink. Uh, like, the kid sinks or something, and so it looks like they died. Um, but then we see it's present day now, so this was just a flashback. And there's two people scuba diving in Guadalupe. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Like, my, my mouth just doesn't say some words. Like, I try to say words, and my mouth just like, yeah. But uh, it does do other stuff, though. After they take a selfie and some other pictures, a shark starts swimming around them, but Naomi, our heroine, played by Madalena, uh, redirects the shark and it swims off. And she says that it was like a relatively harmless shark. It's like a black tip or white or something along those lines. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but she does the whole like put her hand on the snout and just like redirect it off. The diver surface and Naomi's boyfriend Jackson says to him and Barney, the male diver that's with Naomi, that they have to catch a flight and then we learn that Naomi and, and Jackson are together and they're thinking about moving in, but she's not too sure about it and blah, blah, blah. 
Well, we're going to learn little tidbits about their relationship throughout this movie, whether you care or not. Jackson and Barry make it to their helicopter and they say goodbye to Naomi. And then at night she goes to a bar and she's talking with the bartender who's just gotten engaged. And then they chit chat about their relationships and like how hard it is for Naomi to commit to a man that she loves because she would rather just go like sailing and whatnot. And I'm just like, I don't know if that's super crazy. Like they showed some of the exterior shots of where they filmed this. And it's, I think they filmed it in Malta, but it's supposed to take place in the Bahamas. But it's fucking gorgeous. Like, I don't blame her for not wanting to settle down with somebody. Like, if you just spend your life on a fucking boat sailing around looking at gorgeous scenery all the time, why the fuck not? I I don't blame her at all, man. But I'm sure Jackson's a good dude. I'm sure he's fine. That night in bed, we see that Naomi is having nightmares about the incident, about the drowned child at the beginning. And now we see that someone has picked up the kid and pulls them up to the surface, and then she wakes up. So, yeah, this whole dream thing is sprinkled throughout the entire movie. We didn't really need it sprinkled out. Like, we could have gotten it all up front. I, I wasn't a big fan of this little plot thread that they had, but anyways. After she wakes up, she talks to Jackson on the phone, and after he gets off the phone with her, he realizes that it's the anniversary of her parents' death. And, yes, thank you, Captain Exposition. Um, again, we would have learned this throughout the flashbacks anyway, so I don't really know why we needed this little bit of expo exposition, unless it was just for dumb people, I guess. But, yeah. Anyways, uh, later on, Barney and Jackson are watching TV, and Barney's checking the weather, and sees, her, sees there's a massive storm heading towards Naomi. So, Barney calls her on the radio so she can avoid the storm, but Jackson points out that that puts her out of, like, shipping lanes and into dead water, and she assures Jackson... She's got it, you know? She's, no, not a problem. Not going to be any problems here at all. It's going to be smooth sailing. And then Jackson um, apologizes about not realizing that it was the anniversary of her parents' death. Then they just kind of awkwardly hang up after the short, very short conversation. So Na Naomi sails, and the storm starts rolling in. She changes to her direction, and then she eventually comes across two people floating in the water, and they're just hanging on to, like, a wreckage from a boat or something. So she radios it into Jackson, who suggests that she just, like, call it in uh, so she can get further from the storm. But she insists on helping because no one would get there in time. Which, yeah, is a good fucking point. Like, he just tells her, like, ah, just call it in and leave. Like, there's a massive storm coming. Like, okay, I get it, like, spoiler alert, these two are assholes and criminals, but, like... Even if, like, she doesn't know this right now. Like, for all she knows, they're just regular people who got shipwrecked. And I don't know. I just, I couldn't imagine telling somebody to be like, nah, just leave them. They're fine. I don't know. It seems pretty fucking skeezy. I thought Jackson was a good dude, but I think Jackson's kind of a dick. It's kind of a shit move. She brings the two people on board, a man and a woman, and they tell her that the woman's brother is trapped in the wreckage down below. Naomi asked what happened, and they said that there was an explosion, and uh, then Naomi tells her, like, the uh, Maria to not get her hopes up because, like, there's, like, her brother may be dead, basically, because he's been there for three hours, so he may, like, may, like, run out of oxygen or whatever. So Naomi tries to call this into the Coast Guard, and Maria and I believe his name is Tomas. Tomas? To my, oh my god, see, just words won't, ah. anyways, Maria and Tomas, um, they interrupt her as Naomi's trying to call in the Coast Guard, she's trying to call it in to, like, let them know, like, hey, I got two people stranded here on a boat, and they're like, oh, no, there's no time for that, and then they lie and say that they're refugees, and that they get caught, and then, like, deported, they'll be killed in their country, so, of course, Naomi feels bad about this, and so she agrees to dive down and go get the brother. And Maria says that Tomas has uh, diving experience because he's... Um, or no, Tomas says he has diving experience because he used to do uh, diving for salvage and whatnot. So he agrees to go down and help her. And as they enter the wreck, they come across a body and the dude's face is all burnt. And near the surface of the water, we can see a shark starting to come and swim around, assumingly to the wreck. They come across the brother and give him some air and try to get like break him free from some pipes and they move him out and then they get a mask to him and then they start heading out of the ship. And as soon as they try to leave through a hole in the boat, a shark almost rams into them. 
and so now like this was a cg shark but it didn't look half bad and i mean for a movie of this caliber like especially with all newer movies i'm not expecting there to be any practical effects whatsoever i'm positive this is going to be all 100 percent cg and it's fine i'm and it doesn't look too bad it's better than i've seen in some other recent movies that uh maybe even had a bigger budget than the probably not a bigger budget than this one i don't know but yeah the cg was okay it was half decent so so far i approve they head to the bridge and try to leave again and the sharks swim around them again and heads off and naomi tells them to head up as soon as tomas heads out he's attacked by a shark and the shark swims off with him Naomi calms down Jose, who's uh, Maria's brother, uh, so they don't run out of air, and slowly head out of the wreck and head for the surface without incident. So, like, this shark just comes out of fucking nowhere and grabs Tomas, and this part, I it may have been practical. I know I just said I don't think they used any practical effects, but this, like, thinking back about this one, this may have been practical, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'd have to do some more research on this movie, but it's still fairly new. So, yeah, I'm very curious to see um, if they did use practical effects and where they use them. But I think this might be one of those spots. But again, not 100% sure. So Naomi and Jose get to the surface, and then Maria automatically asks, like, where Tomas is. And then as soon as she asks, like, further off, we see, like, uh, his torso basically float up to the surface all bloody. And then it kind of bobs around and then a shark finally pulls it down and eats them. And like this, the body looked like a practical effect too. I don't think the body, the like fake torso was CG. So that was cool. I appreciated that. A little bit of gore we like. And it's not something we get too often in a lot of these shark movies, surprisingly. You would think that there would be more gore in shark movies. I don't know. Like it just the vicious nature of it all. But I guess with all the low budgets but it, uh, still that doesn't even make a whole lot of sense why is there no more why isn't there more gore in these movies <sighs> Fuck. i wish somebody would just give me money to go make a shark movie so i could just make it fucking gory and bloody as hell but anyways what the fuck was i talking about right so uh, Naomi tries to radio into the Coast Guard again, and then Jose busts the radio and pulls a gun on Naomi, and then Maria comes down and explains their situation. So basically, they were moving 200 kilos of cocaine, and then the people on the boat wanted in on it, I guess, or were trying to steal it. And so then basically Maria and Jose and Tomas fucked everybody up, boat sank, now we're here. So yeah, they want uh, they want Naomi to dive down, grab the cocaine, and then take them to the Florida Keys. And Naomi's like, well, why would I do that? You're just going to fucking kill me as soon as you're done. But then Maria's like, we don't know how to sail a boat, so what are we going to do? I don't know why I did a southern accent. She's pretty sure she's Spanish. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. It's been a long day. I'm tired. But yeah, basically, Maria assures Naomi that, yeah, we'll let you go, because we don't know how to sail a boat. So, like, once you get the cocaine, you'll be fine. It's it's fine. So, Maria says that Jose will help her, because he knows how to dive. And then he yells at her to give him a dive suit, and then locks her in her sleeping quarters. I, I don't know why. <sighs> Anyways. While she's locked in there, she grabs another radio from the desk and calls Jackson, but then Maria, like, sees her from up top, like, she's looking down in through, like, a skylight or some shit, and so Jose busts in and then tosses the radio overboard, and Jackson didn't hear much, but he heard enough to be worried, so he heads off with Barney, and then we cut back to Jose and Maria, and they dive down to the wreck as sharks are, like, swimming in circles around it. And a lot of this was just stock footage for the most part. Um, so it was fine. I mean, it's real sharks. And, yeah, it was placed in here okay, I guess. I'll give it that. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it was fine. And they open up the doors on the deck of the wreck, and a body floats up and scares the shit out of Naomi. They head inside the boat and start loading up the cocaine. And then back on land, Barney and Jackson try to tell the police about Naomi. And, like, Jackson wants the police to send out, like, a search and rescue party. But the guy is, like, giving them the whole runaround. Like, oh, it hasn't been 24 hours yet. You know, I'm sure she's fine. Without any evidence whatsoever. Like, oh, yeah, she's fine. 
Like, no, she radioed and she was screaming and then she got cut off. Seems like a problem to me, but... Fucking useless cops, man. Jesus Christ. Back at the wreck, Na Naomi and Jose are ascending with some coke, and a shark attacks and bites into the bags of cocaine as it goes after Naomi. Finally! Fucking cocaine sharks! Yeah! Woo! She retreats into the wreckage, and the shark comes after her again and manages to get into the wreck, but Naomi closes the doors on the deck to trap it inside as she swims away. She eventually surfaces, and the shark escapes the wreck, and she's pulled on board of the boat just in the nick of time. Whew. And then Jose immediately asks what happened to the bags, and she says the shark bit into them and that the rest are on the deck. Like, he saw this happen. He saw the shark bite into the bags of cocaine, so I don't know why he's asking. He was there, and then he swam away as she was getting attacked, but, like, he still knows what happened. I think Jose might be stupid or, like, maybe just partially brain dead. I don't know. I really don't know. So, after some arguing back and forth, Maria decides they'll go back down tomorrow because Naomi can only do two dives at that depth in a day, um, which is probably a real thing because I know you can only do, um, especially at certain depths, so I think this is actually probably based on some sort of reality. Oh my goodness. Wow. Isn't that exciting? They did some research. Wow. And then we also learn that the crew on the boat were shot by the three drug dealers. I mean, I could have assumed that. Like, we didn't need Maria and Jose telling us this. And it was actually Naomi who was like, oh, yeah, no, they weren't uh, just burnt. They were shot, which I barely even saw. I didn't even realize that. Um, but again, like, I could have... It just doesn't matter. I could have already assumed this. We just didn't need this. Naomi says she needs to raise the anchor because you can't be anchored during a storm, but Jose and Maria insist on staying where they are so they don't lose uh, the wreck. So they're afraid that if they, like, pull up anchor, they'll drift away from the wreck and then they won't be able to find the cocaine, and oh no, what are all the Wall Street douches going to do without their cocaine? Back on land, Jackson bursts into the helicopter pilot's place and asks him for help. Jackson insists she's not okay, and eventually the pilot agrees, but... Then Jackson gets the idea from the pilot that he can just take a really fast boat and then go out to them. I don't know why he just didn't do this earlier, but because the pilot says, like, yeah, I'll take you out, but if the weather's too bad, like, I'm turning around and we'll have to go in the morning. And Jackson doesn't want to do that. So Jackson goes back outside to Barney, and he tells Barney, you go with the helicopter pilot in the morning. I'm going to go grab a boat and go and get Naomi. So he does this, and I'm assuming that he steals a boat. I don't think this is his boat. I'm pretty sure he just steals this boat. So yeah, he goes down to the dock, steals a boat, and then he heads off to find Naomi. Back on the boat, Maria and Jose argue about how much they lost and how it's going to come out of their cut. And then Maria says that they need to get out of this business so they can start their own distribution business. I was like, oh, Maria, you want to get out of the drug dealing business or, like, drug trafficking or whatever and, like, turn your life around. Like, maybe there'll be some, like, redemption for you. But no, she's just like, yeah, I want to get out of this drug business and start my own drug business. I mean, it's nice to have goals, I guess. But maybe not these ones. Just saying. And then Jose suggests that they take whatever drugs they have left, sell them, and then start their own business. And Maria says, like, the drug dealers aren't just going to forget about the million dollars of cocaine that went missing. But Jose's like, yeah, no, shipments go missing all the time. It's fine. Like, ugh. And it's like, no. Like, what? So he wants to take these drugs, sell them, and then start his own drug business. Do you not think in those circles of people you're going to run into the original owners of those drugs and then realize that, like, oh, they stole my drugs to start up their own business and then they're going to kill you? Like, how long have you been doing this drug running shit? Not long enough because you know nothing. Nothing. Ugh. Jesus. But, yeah. Anyways, uh, Jose, this plan fucking sucks. Down below, Naomi's having nightmares about her parents again and this time we see her dad putting her into an inflatable raft and telling her he's going to back to find her mother. And then Jose wakes her up. Oh. Jackson is coming up to the boat and Maria says if they all want to live, she better do everything she tells her. So she tells everyone to start waving and smile at him. So they do. 
And then Jackson gets on the boat and Jose pulls the gun on him and Maria fills him in on the, on the situation. So I, I don't know what Maria thought was going to happen. Like was Jackson going to get up to the boat and then be worried or like, like she didn't need to like put on this whole facade of like smile and wave or whatever, because they have a gun and Jackson was coming up to the boat anyways. It just seems like there's not a lot of thought put into some of the writing of this. I, I don't know. It's just weird to me. So after Maria fills Jackson in on everything, Naomi and Jose suit up to dive down. Um, and then Maria has Jackson tied up on the deck. And then she talks to Jackson and he knows Maria knows how to sail because of the knot that she used to tie him up. And then Maria basically tells him her plan to kill everybody and take the drugs for herself, including her own fucking brother. Like, this bitch is crazy. Like, this is insane. Like, she's manipulating even her own brother. She's like, yeah, no, fuck him. I mean, granted, Jose is kind of a fucking idiot, especially with his plan, like, oh, let's just steal the drugs and then go and sell them and nobody will know. Uh, yeah, I guess I can't really blame her that much. Still, though, I'm... <sighs> We don't monologue your fucking plan. Like, we don't need this in this movie. It, it's like the last thing this shit needs, but... Anyways, let's keep plugging along here. We're, we're almost through. We're almost there. Down below, they're bagging up the coke, and Jose hits Naomi over the head with a metal bar and puts her into the ship and closes the doors on the deck. And then she dreams, or has a nightmare, or whatever, about her dad, telling her not to give up, and that he and her mother are so proud of her, and that she can't give up, and, like, she's got to figure figure it out. So she wakes up and starts looking around, and she looks around the outside of the wreck. Jose has now surfaced, and he's moving towards the boat. Uh, Jackson is trying to cut his ropes loose, and there's two sharks now circling the wreckage. Naomi sends her air tanks up as a distraction so she can leave the wreck unnoticed. So the sharks are distracted by the tanks and follow them, and so the tanks surface, and they confuse Jose and Maria as well. And then Maria sees the sharks coming in from behind Jose and tells him to swim and get out of the water, which he does not manage to accomplish. He gets fucked up pretty good. Uh, yeah, so Maria basically just watches in horror as he is brutally attacked by the two sharks, like jumping out of the air, jumping into the air with his body and whatnot. Beautiful. You fucking deserved it, Jose. So yeah, Maria watches in horror. Uh, Naomi has snuck up to the side of the boat. Jackson has cut his ropes loose, and then Maria tries to shoot Naomi, uh, but Paul knocks her into the water, and then Naomi climbs on board. And, like, this scene where uh, Maria was trying to kill Naomi, it felt, I don't know, it's almost like they filmed Naomi sneaking up on the side of the boat and then added gunshots in later because she doesn't look that scared to me. Like... I don't know, it felt weird. Like, it felt like this wasn't planned, or maybe it was just cut weird. I don't know, but I didn't I didn't really care for it. And then, like, Paul just, like, knocks her into the water. Like, like it's nothing. It just, it feels like very low stakes right now. But let's, let's power through to the end here. Barney and the helicopter pilot fly around and finally spot the boat, and then Jackson radios that they're coming home now. So having Barney and the helicopter pilot come at all was completely fucking pointless. Like, not they did nothing. Like, they are too late to everything else. I don't know. And then on the boat, Naomi tells Jackson about her epiphany or dream she had about her dad and that he's been there all her life. And then Jackson is glad that he told her to keep living. Great. And then she essentially proposes to Jackson, and then they kiss each other and say, let's go home. And as Naomi is basking in the sunshine, Maria comes up from behind her with a rope, starts choking her, and then Jackson shoots Maria with a flare gun, and she falls into the water with a burning hole in her chest. Jackson and Naomi embrace, and basically, we end there. That's deep fear. <sighs> Guys, where's my cocaine sharks? That's all I want to know. Where are my cocaine... <sighs> like, they showed a shark biting into a shit ton of cocaine and nothing crazy happened. Like, nothing. Uh, like... So, okay, let's get into the poster expectations. 
So we did get a shark biting into some cocaine. Um, and like maybe one line mentioning that the shark may have been hopped up on coke. And that was when uh, they decided that they were going to dive down the next morning with Maria and Jose. So it's like, yeah, the shark's all hopped up on coke now. So it's like, okay, we'll, we'll wait. No, I want, where's my cocaine sharks? Where's my sharks hopped up on fucking coke doing crazy shit, man? Like, ah. Uh... Yeah, I, uh, I wanted more shenanigans. I wanted more shark and cocaine shark shenanigans. I wanted it. But no, like the sharks were an obstacle in this movie, but like they definitely were not the main focus. Um, everything also, like I said, for the most part, felt like pretty low stakes. And I think that's partially the sharks not being as formidable as an enemy as they could have been. Um, like being on coke, maybe? I don't know. And, and we don't see the sharks that much either. Like, we don't see them until, like, 35, 40 minutes into the movie. And then even then, like, we get a couple of good scenes. Like, a couple of the deaths were good. Um, but, I mean, like, we don't really get any quote-unquote cocaine sharks. Like, it's... Listen, it's a fine enough movie. The CGI was decent. It's short. It's, like, an hour and 24 minutes. So, that's not bad. Um, there may have been one or two shots with a practical shark, but again, I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, I just think you should keep expectations low for this one. Um, and don't go in expecting this to be like the cocaine bear, um, of shark movies. Cause it's definitely not. I'm still hoping we get a movie like that, you know, but until then we have this and cocaine sharks. That's all we got, which Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this a two stars. Um, you know, it has a 1.9 on Letterboxd, and I think that's fair. Um, the lead ac lead actress is a oak show. Um, so no complaints there. Um, I just wish there was more to this. It just it feels like a rehash of so many other movies with similar plots. Um, but I didn't hate it. I thought it was okay. But it's definitely it doesn't feel like a shark exploitation movie. It's just, there's a movie and there's some sharks in there. And then they, I feel like they were trying to ride on the cocaine bear success and like try to make it seem like that's what the type of movie it was going to be. And it's definitely not, but yeah. So I'm giving it two stars on letterbox, but that's deep fear from 2023. As always, you guys can follow me on all of the social medias. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Slasher, all at Bucket of Chum Podcast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you want to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Bucket of Chum. But I will see you guys next time for an all new episode of Bucket of Chum. <laughs>